We're back here at NRA headquarters at the National Farms Museum with Jim Zapika, director of all the NRA museums. And Jim, what is going on on this? There's so many beautiful <laughs> wheel guns. What are we doing here? Well, we're going to take a look at probably the least known six gun of the Old West, oh. but one that really played a fairly significant role. People just aren't aware of it. I love it. In part because the company really didn't survive very long. Oh. But you think of cowboy guns, what do you think of? Everybody knows the Colt Single Action Army. Everybody. Iconic. Worldwide. Everybody in the Old West carried yep. one of these, if you believe, early Hollywood and TV <laughs> westerns. Yes. And they're great guns. They're sturdy as heck. Uh, six shot cartridge revolver. A little slow to reload. Mm -hmm. You have to go to each each chamber and you have to punch out You're the right. empty, load a new shell, and then yeah. advance it to the next and repeat that. No speed loader there. No, no, <laughs> very good gun, but everybody knows them. And as people get into Old West guns a little bit more, they realize that there were other six guns that were popular there. there. Probably most notably, the Smith & Wesson Model 3s. Ooh. Now this is uh, uh, probably the best known Smith & Wesson Model 3. There's a whole family of them. This is the Schofield. But people know Schofields primarily because it was a military issue gun mm -hmm. during the Indian Wars. Okay. And it had a much faster reload system than the, uh, than the Colt. You pop the latch and your empties are going to automatically oh, yeah. eject, wow. rear cylinder face is open for a quick reload. Offered some serious advantages yeah. and really introduced before the Colt single action army and it took uh, Colt uh, into the 20th century to catch up in terms of ma numbers made. Now when people think about the third most prevalent six gun of the Old West, they probably think about the Remington six guns like this model 1875. Right. It's a nice handsome it's, gun. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Works exactly like the Colt uh, when it came out uh, uh, you know, some folks said, well, they copied the Colt, which Remington pointed out that they had this top strap design during the Civil War when mm -hmm. Colt was making open tops. But actually a gun that was probably produced in greater numbers is the somewhat weird but very cool Merwin Hilbert revolver. Ooh. Now you see that has the open top like the early percussion Colt. Colts. This is an early, early variation. Yeah. This is a this is a first model. These were big 44 caliber guns, like uh, like a lot of the Colts and nearly all of the uh, uh, Smiths. And it again is a single action revolver, but its operating mechanism is just so cool. And you got to pay attention to this. There's a button under here that you push. You twist the barrel to the side. You pull it forward. Jeez. Now this design was intended to wear. The, the rim of your shells is caught under there. You pull it forward just far enough, your empties fall out, your loaded cartridges stay in the chambers, and then you can just reload the, uh, wow. the empty ones. Or you can go all the way and all of them fall out. Uh, so a, an ingenious design uh, and uh, uh, possibly a lot of guys will tell you this is the finest machined uh, revolver of the era by far. It's beautiful looking. Yeah, they, they offered the single action. The early ones had the open top. They also made uh, a double actions, and this is a double action example. Uh, you see it does have the top strap on it. It has a folding hammer, oh. so it can be carried concealed. Right. And of course the double action trigger. I'm going to show you something on this gun that shows you how well made they were. Watch what happens when I open the barrel and cylinder and then release it. Jeez. It pops back. Well machined. There are Jeez. no springs in there. Oh man. That's just the suction that's created where it's wow. so closely machined. So, wow. And, and then this latch is very, very difficult to machine. So prob And the plating was a special plating process that was the finest of the era. So arguably the best made revolver of the 1870s and 1880s which is about all the longer they last. Merwin Hilbert was out of business uh, late in the 19th century, a little little production into the early 20th century, but very, very cool, uh, very, very cool revolvers. So how can we see more like this? Well, we've got them at the NRA Museums, the NRA National Firearms Museum in Fairfax, Virginia, uh, the NRA National Sporting Arms Museum at Bass Pro Shop in Springfield, Missouri, the Frank Brownell Museum of the Southwest at uh, the NRA Whittington Center in Raton, New Mexico, uh, and of course online at nramuseums.com.